Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Pete. This is where we talk about money, finances, where we give you information and education to help you make the best financial and investment decisions possible. This week has been an amazing week, and I'm going to tell you why in a moment. But on October 21st, I did a video saying that we crossed 5,000 subscribers. And yesterday, we crossed 6,000 subscribers. What? 6,000 subscribers. Now, I feel like I'm a broken record when I say this in the videos, but you guys are amazing and thank you so much. In the last two weeks, we picked up 1,079 new subscribers. I mean, this thing is going nuts. And I have you guys to thank for it because if it's not for your engagement, your sharing, your liking, your commenting, this would not be possible. And I wish that I could take, you know, credit for this, but really I'm just making videos and uploading them. You have to see it, you have to watch it, you have to share, you have to comment, you have to like, and you're doing that in, in abundance and I'm so thankful for it. You're really helping me get the satisfaction that I've been seeking for quite some time on this channel. So thank you so, so much. If you found this channel because you've gone to a review video and you've been pointed here, then you're probably here because you want to understand how investments work, you want to know how you can use your money to build for the future. And you probably just want that information in a really kind of easy to understand format. This is the channel for you. I don't use jargon. I try and make sure that it's very, very clear. I try to make sure that it's very, very easy to follow. And I try and make sure as well that you learn something so that you can take that and actually do something about it tomorrow. So definitely consider subscribing smash the like button. The like button is very, very important for other people like you seeing this video. If you don't smash the like button, YouTube will think this video sucks. I'm not going to show it to anyone. So you're much needed in this department. Make sure that you subscribe, obviously, because I post every Tuesday and every Friday. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll get told when I upload videos as well. So with that being said, thank you so much, guys. I want to talk about stake again today. We started on Tuesday doing this, but I want to show you around the app. I'm potentially going to be looking at buying stocks. We might do that as well. And I want to talk about one particular stock that has been on my radar or is been on my radar because I've had so many questions on it. And today, well, this week, it's gone nuts. So we'll talk about that. Let's go. All right, so just to start, if you've not watched the video from Tuesday, there it is right there. Definitely go check it out. That's going to give you the lowdown of who stake are, whether they're authorized and regulated, what protections you have in place. It's going to talk about the USPs. It's going to tell you about some of the things that I think you definitely need to know as a first time investor, particularly if you're using Trading 212 or considering using Trading 212. It's going to explain all about the brand, what they want to be known for. This is going to explain exactly how they make money. I must admit my thumbnail was a bit bold in terms of the, the assertion or the question that I was asking better than trading 212 question mark. It wasn't a claim, but one to get you thinking about. And I certainly believe that they have one USP which definitely sets them apart. And I'll be highlighting a little bit of that in this video here today. But go and watch that first video first because you're going to need that as a foundation. So stake, this is my account. As you can see, I haven't got any holdings in here right now. Now I completely forgot to fund my account with $50 within 24 hours of opening this. So I didn't get my free share. Now, if you do want a free share, there is a link in the description below. You use that, open an account, fund it with 50 pounds or $50 in the first 24 hours, and you will get a free share. Once you're up and running, if you want to get more free shares, then they do what Trading212 do, is you can invite your friends. There's your code right there. You copy it, send it to your friends. And when your friend joins, credits their account with $50 in the first 24 hours, you also get a free share as well. So there's a way for you to invite people onto something. They get something free. You get something free. It's a win, win, win. Now, I have credited my account with a little bit of money. So I credited it with £100 
And in transition from pounds to dollars, I've ended up with $124.84. Now, in the video on Tuesday, I did explain how they make money. So one of the ways that they make money is they will levy a 0.5% charge on any um, currency conversion. So because these guys are trading on the US stock market, then anything that you buy is going to be in USD. So, so on that transfer, they charge you 0.5%. Or a minimum of two dollars. So I paid two dollars for the deposit. They also charge you two dollars as well, or 0.5 percent on withdrawals. But I've paid two dollars for the currency conversion. I also paid an additional two dollars as well because when you deposit money into this account, you have the option of either um, going for the fast option, which means it will transfer within 24 hours. So it's a quick service or you can pay nothing and you'd have to wait 48 hours roughly, I believe, for the money to be credited. I wanted to see how quickly it would work, how it would work, so I paid an additional $2, which means that altogether on this transaction, they've made $4 on here. Now, I haven't got anything in here right now, but let's go to the I down at the bottom here. Now, this is where if you're watching any stocks or you have any stocks on your radar, this is where they're going to pop up. So I want to talk a little bit about NEO today. I'm considering actually buying this stock. Um, so they're already on my watch list. Let's go to Wall Street. And Wall Street gives you kind of like an interface where you can see all of the, the markets. So you see the S&P 500 up 1.95% today. Um, the markets over in the States open in 14 hours and 27 minutes time. You've got the NASDAQ there. You've got the VIX, US stocks, gold. So this gives you a good overview of the markets out in the States. You've got movers, market movers, you've got popular searches, so what people are actually searching for. So again, if you're doing your research and you're trying to think, okay, what are people actually searching for? This ticker right here will give you a good indication of, of what those searches are. Then you've got movers and shakers. So which stocks have gone up the most today? Which stocks have gone down the most today? There is a list of companies. You can also look at them according to categories. So you can look at stocks and you can look at ETFs as well. One thing I would say, if you are going to use this app, definitely worthwhile having a little nosy around with all of the news articles that they post here as well. Again, if you're using these guys or using anyone like this, Trading212, Free Trade, eToro, the research that you're doing is going to be very, 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 very important because you want to make sure that you're making the right decision when you're picking stock. So for example, if I'm considering Netflix, okay, I'd like to want to know what is this, what is this article actually saying? Are they saying something positive or something negative? Does what they have to say impact my decision to buy this stock? Because there might be a knock-on effect to the share price. Who knows? This is all stuff that you'll be looking for in articles like this. So take the time, read them, get familiarized with you know some of the language that they use and just get familiarized with how things are reported about stocks as well. Just going to come back out of this. I was going to show you strategies. So one of the biggest questions that I get at the moment is, well, Pete, what are good high paying dividend stocks? Well, right here, you've got high paying dividends and there are five companies that they've listed here as high paying dividend stocks. So you can use this feature to find those. And you've got a whole load of other things. You've got trade volatility in there as well. Rap is really, really good. It's a load of blogs. We've also got podcast episodes in there. So again, spend some time to understand how this interface works, how this app works. Now, I want to go onto the search icon. I want to type in Neo here. I know I've got it on my watch list, but just thought I'd show you how to do this. I'm going to click on this. Now, this is where you're going to land. And now, when you're buying stocks, it's really important that you understand why you're buying stocks. Just going with market sentiment or going to buy a stock just because everybody else is doing it is no way to begin to invest money. As a first time investor, as a professional investor, you have to be able to look at this dispassionately, i.e. you cannot afford to get let your emotions get involved in any of your investment decisions. They have to be cold, calculated decisions. Is it a good buy? Is it of good value? Do I believe it's going to be worth more money in the long term or short term if you're trading? There can be no, oh, but I really, really like the logo of this company, or I really like what they do, but the fundamental data behind the company does not work. You have to be dispassionate around it. And, you know, all of these apps now, Trading212, Free Trade, they all present information really, really well.
But the reason why I talk about said that about Neo is because you just need to have a look at this graph. What is going on here? I mean, this is this is just literally one day. It's gone from whatever the number is here, thirty nine dollars, all the way up to forty two dollars just today. Let's zoom out. Go a month on October the fifth at one p.m. This stock was trading at twenty one pounds and forty two pence. Let's go back a year. On November 13th, November the 11th, 2019, this stock was trading at £1.96. It is now $42. And again, this has happened mainly at this point here. So that's back in, let's have a look at this. That's back in June 2020. So for the last five months, this stock has basically been killing it, motoring, because of market sentiment, because there seems to be some kind of craze around this. Now, it's okay to admire a stock because it's crazy, but you have to ask the question, why are you investing? What is your goal? It's something that I speak a lot about on my investment course. I speak a lot about it on Instagram, whenever you, you hear me talk, on lives or in the videos here on YouTube. Your goal is so important. Does buying this stock move you closer towards your goal? So for example, what are you investing for? Are you investing for the long term? Are you investing for the short term? Are you investing for a house deposit? Are you investing for retirement? Are you investing in order to accumulate wealth over a 10 to 15 year term? Or are you looking to accumulate wealth over a shorter period of time? Your goal will essentially inform your plan. Your plan will then inform, in turn, what stocks you buy, how long you hold them for, when you sell them, if you sell them. All of this stuff is interconnected, so you need to have a clear goal. You cannot afford FOMO to be a factor in your stock selection or stock buying decisions. So look, the stock price here, pretty, pretty high for what the company is. I was, I was doing a bit of research and people say that it should have hit $40 two years from now. Not right now. So the question really here is, and this is what I'm going to be looking at, is, is this a good buy? Is it still, is it still of value or is it overvalued right now? That's what I want to know. Now, for me personally, I'm looking to build wealth over the long term. So if I buy this stock, I will be looking to buy it to hold for the long term and add to my holdings as I go along as well. But let's get into the specifics of the company that I'm going to show you how you actually buy stocks. I'm going to talk you through some of the ratings on here as well. So the first thing I like about this company is the fact that they actually have a product. There are a number of EV companies or startups that have launched in recent years that had no product to sell in the first place and were never going to make any money or still are not making any money. One of the good things about Neo is they actually have a physical product. People are exchanging their hard-earned cash for their product, and that is only a good thing. They've got half of the equation actually won in the fact that they are actually selling products to a customer base. In fact, in Q2 of this year, they delivered 10,331 viral. So it's a trading company. I like that. The second thing that I like is that they're an EV company that is dubbed to be the rival to Tesla. Now, anything rivaling Tesla could be a good thing. I love Tesla. I hold Tesla. I drive a Tesla, right? But one thing you have to understand in this picture when I was doing research is why they're dubbed to be the rivals of Tesla, and where they're dubbed to be the rivals of Tesla. Now, Tesla is not just a car company, unlike what most people think. And I did a video where I spoke specifically about that. Tesla is a software company that just happens to make cars. And there's so many other things going on with Tesla in itself. But at the core, it's a software company that makes a car. The same is to be said for NEO. They are a company, a software company, that happens to manufacture a car. And this company is essentially backed by the Chinese government. 
which is a huge benefit. In fact, right now, they manufacture all of their vehicles. Their production line is actually manufactured in a facility that is managed, funded, and run by the Chinese government. And that doesn't even go on to looking at factors like the Chinese government's real push to wean the country off internal combustion engines into an EV era. I mean, they have literally just extended in incentives for EVs for two years to last until 2022 to the tune of $390 billion. The Chinese are really throwing money at this. And if you know anything about the Chinese, they, they, it's not good enough for them to have Tesla selling in their market. They love their own market. They have a monopoly over their market. They want their own Tesla. And NEO is being heavily backed by the Chinese government. In addition to all of this as well, NEO actually have a very, very unique proposition. You can buy the cars, the chassis, and you can lease the battery. That is something that Tesla isn't doing. And that's actually something that is actually quite revolutionary because it means that as battery technology essentially improves, you can literally keep your chassis, but simply upgrade your battery. And that in itself is amazing. So literally, you could go and buy the chassis of the vehicle at a discounted price and they then pay a monthly leasing rate for the battery. They also have you know, things where if you're driving around and you want to charge your car, you don't have to wait and charge the vehicle. You can literally swap the battery out within five minutes. These are all unique propositions that these guys are developing, which is in, that is really going to add value to their, their stock price in the future. Not to mention, they're also looking at launching a ride hailing service just like Tesla. Only in China, the Chinese government could greenlight it expeditiously, just like that, because they're China. Whereas Elon has the challenge of trying to get through regulation. And it has to be signed off. And Tesla need that in order to be able to launch those services. Whereas Neo could just do that tomorrow as long as they get the sign off from the Chinese government. And guess what? Chinese government is backing them big. Now, what are some of the downsides as I see them? I've already mentioned one of them actually. And that is the fact that they are backed by the Chinese government. Whilst that is a really good thing, it's also a bad thing. It can also be a negative. Prime example, the factory where they're manufacturing their vehicles out of is funded and managed by the government. Within their contract, they also have a clause that says that they will cover the losses that the factory incurs, if the factory incurs it. And that may seem reasonable, but producing these cars is very, 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 very expensive. Tesla have now got to a place where Everything is, is internally, virtually integrated. So they have their own systems. They don't, they're not really using any external components. They are building everything themselves and they own all of those facilities. That does wonders to increasing your profit margin on each of the cars that you sell. Neo are not going to be in this position because essentially they're backed by the government. The government is running their factory. So you have a number of issues there, not to mention the Chinese government aren't always the most transparent. So they could flip flop, they could change their mind, they don't have to report things. And as long as you're buying stocks that aren't actually registered really in the UK, or the holding company isn't in actually in the UK, isn't American, you're always going to have transparency issues. And the Chinese definitely do what they want and ask questions a little bit later on, or at least ask forgiveness a bit later on. So that is a, is a big downside on its own. Another downside as I see it is they are going to have scaling problems. We've talked about the fact that you know they're going to potentially launch a ride hailing service, that they're going to have this service where you can swap out your battery within five minutes and not have to charge your battery. So literally rock up, the battery gets taken out, gets replaced within five minutes. They have to build all of this infrastructure. All the while they haven't got you know, the production of this streamlined and it's outsourced to the Chinese government, there will always be some profitability issues. The company is not making profit right now. It is burning through cash. You just need to have a look at the accounts, the balance sheet to understand 
that these guys are hemorrhaging money. And this is to be expected because they are a new company trying to get to scale. I mean, Tesla has been around for 17 years now, not long started to make profit. So there are some positives and there are some downsides with this stock. Ultimately, it is, it is, a, it is a speculative play. You have to be willing to hold this for the long term, or at least if you're trading, be able to understand the volatility issues and be able to spot the opportunities for you to make some money. So does that mean this is something that I'm going to add to my portfolio? Because I believe in investing in funds, they're low cost, they give me market saturation, they give me diversification. However, I do hold individual stocks. I own Tesla, I own Disney. I own a number of other companies across Trading212 and Hargreaves Lansdowne. And I'm about to buy some more stocks using a third app and I need to keep it tidy. But essentially, if I'm going to buy this stock, which I am right now, just to show you guys how it works, this is how you would do it. So this is where this is, you know, your account, my account again, and you will be on this page. And I have to stress, guys, have a good look around this. It's telling you there are 8,171 people who have viewed this, this, this stock. There have been 3,208 trades. There are 249 people physically watching this stock who have it on a watch list. You can see the dividend yields. You can see the PE ratios. You've got news that are specific to NEO. You should read this. The analyst ratings are stating that this stock right now is a buy, a 100% buy. And that's just from JP Morgan and Deutsche Bank. If you wanted to really get into the weeds of doing some real analysis on this, then you can go into the financials. You can have a look at the earnings, the balance sheets, you know, earnings per share. You can have a look at all of this. You can see full financials here. I'm not going to do that for the purpose of this video. But if you're going to execute a trade, you simply type, click on buy there. You go with the number of shares that you want. I'm going to go and buy three. Uh, and then you're going to go and put what you're going to buy them at. So can I get them at 142? I haven't got enough for that. So I'm gonna go at 41 because I've only got $124 in here. So I'm gonna put a price limit of $41. So essentially, when it hits $41, this should execute a trade for me. I'm gonna click buy. It's gonna ask me to literally just review the order. I'm gonna click buy, it's sending. Confirmed order placed. Now, bear in mind that the markets are not going to be open for the next 14 hours. It's simply a waiting game. But that's how easy it is to buy stocks in the stake app. It's very, very straightforward. If you want to check these guys out, there's a link in the description which will help you get a free share. You need to fund the account with $50 within 24 hours of creating your account. I appreciate you watching this video. If you do have questions, make sure you leave something in the comment or you can find me on IG and ask me a question there. It might take me a while to get back to you on IG, but I will definitely get back to you. As always, if you've not listened to the podcast, there it is right there. Until next week, have a good weekend.